John Rutledge. John has also been involved uh, for many, many years in PNSQC. And uh, I think he took a few a few days off or a few years off during the pandemic. And it's great to have you back, John. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. And uh, give me a thumbs up if the audio is good um, for people online. Okay. All right. So I'm I'm John Rutledge, and uh, driving over here, I realized over the past 33 years, I've worked at three organizations of which I can see out this window. Um, and one thing um, that I did is um, at, at these organizations, we grew some very high performing teams. And um, so we broke down and, and looked at what were the characteristics of that? How can we recreate it reliably, you know, wherever we're at? So here's Here's a quick breakdown on what I have observed and what we've done to build some very high-performing, highly engaged teams. The first um, rule here or principle I call is MAPS. MAPS just stands for uh, mastery, autonomy, purpose, and support. So mastery is a characteristic of an individual. So when you are working of mastery over what you're doing, mastery of the technology, mastery of the domain, right and you become highly engaged building a high performing highly engaged team second is what uh, we call just autonomy and autonomy is the you've got the latitude to make decisions you've got the latitude to experiment and explore and do the right thing um, every day in our jobs we have to make hundreds, dozens, if not hundreds of decisions. And the more that we can disperse that, the more we can train people and give them the, the room to use their judgment, to make decisions, to do the right, to do the right thing without being instructed or see a committee or something. You pick up velocity and, you, and your quality improves and people uh, enjoy that. It, it supercharges them. Um, next is purpose, and this is really a responsibility of the organization and its leadership. What purpose? What unites us? What are our common values? Why are we here doing this work? Most of the time, it's going to be focused around the customer. It's going to be focused on the people that are using your product and benefiting by the work that you do. So why are we here? Understanding that and having that ingrained with everybody on the team um, is vital. Um, finally, wrapping it up, um, I put support on there because to make it all work, you really need the support of your organization. You need to have some backing. You've got to have the backing of your peers, your the people, uh, your colleagues that are maybe even outside of your organization. But you have to have the um, the tools and then the, the 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 backing and the support of your organization to can come in each day and do the work and grow that team and it's uh, and, and become able deliver consistently and deliver very high quality products. Uh, next slide. The third key is uh, what I call the three A's so is really the goals of the organization, right? So, uh, you'll every year, sometimes it's very formal, you'll have OKRs or MBO or some method of setting and managing your goals of the organization. Um, then aptitude are, is an individual characteristic about what you're good at, what, what comes doing. And the third A is asp aspiration are the things that you enjoy doing the things that you want to become, where do you want to grow? Where do you want to go? Um, look for those three things. Um, let people focus on that, get involved and deliver and work in that zone. And you're going to see, again, Super supercharged teams, highly engaged individuals, and uh, next slide. The third key 
what I call the three S's. And this is a this this is about how you organize and operate uh, your organization. These from like TQM or other quality practices. The first one I think is 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 critical. Simplify. Uh, we work with. Oh, okay. Um, simplify. So we work with very complicated technology, complex system, complex markets. Um, the way we operate, the way we organize ourselves um, is a challenge to not become over-engineered, over-complicated, um, overly complex. So seek to simplify, learn the methods of simplification. Simplification is not easy, but it's absolutely essential. And when you have simplification practices in place and everybody is participating it, participating in it, um, you're going to recognize it. It's very, very important to um, the streamlining and the effectiveness of, of the team and the organization. Uh, second S is systematize. So a lot of what we do, uh, test automation is a great example of this. 30 years ago, we didn't have nearly as much test automation as we do now. That's a great example of systemization. We've, we're systematically um, turning our the work into machines. It doesn't just have to be a technology or an automation systemization either. The, the methods that we, we operate, good policies, good processes, good procedures that are simple um, will help us create the systems, turn our work into a machine. The side effect of that is that it frees you up to do more creative, to do things that require more critical thinking, to engage and work uh, more closely with your peers. The final S, the third S, is around stabilization. This sometimes gets because we think that we need to be agile. We are ingrained to think, embrace change, you know, pivot, and all those key, key buzzwords out there around organizations many times are pivoting constantly because they're not totally in control of where they're going or what they're doing. Um, stabilization doesn't mean become bureaucracy. It doesn't mean lock things down and make people immobilized. It means for those that you can stabilize, create reliable systems. Systems that, that are tested, tested efficiently, um, and then the organization itself, how do we set up and manage our business, stabilize that when things are constantly in flux, when people are being tossed around, you know, on, a, on the boat in the ocean, um, your, your delivery velocity goes down, your quality is at risk of going down, it's very hard to get things done. So seek, seek for, find ways to stabilize, um, to uh, provide that environment, create the conditions for people to go out and do great work. Final slide, wrap it up. High performing teams, quality results, inseparable. High performance, high quality, um, uh, the things that you do to achieve that, they're kind of the same things. You achieve high performance, you're gonna have high quality, they go hand in hand. Maps, three A's, three S's. Find ways to apply those, um, improve on them. Sometimes if you get out of calibration, back in the line. Keep, kind of keep that, all three moving. In. Which will lead to the... So use those three keys and... And any questions? Yeah, I've talked with people about, okay, the question is, um, has COVID made any of these things more difficult? I kind of paraphrase that, right? So, and <clears throat> I did notice um, this happening. Technology-focused teams. Um, I 
observed our my own team we did better um we were we were able to have um our lives were simplified we weren't traveling and commuting hours uh, each day to work we weren't going into meetings unnecessarily and super efficient in what we're doing um teams we use teams um we weren't waiting around and walking across a campus or moving between floors to get to a meeting you click a button and you're in the meeting we can very efficient and some of those meetings were short so a lot of capacity was freed up for people to to do the work right uh, ears could get into context and stay in context easily um, communications were instantaneous we, through chat we didn't hardly ever use email slack um, so technical teams actually benefited work um customer focus like customer support teams um they from from what i was hearing from them they actually were impacted by covid because many of the people that were working at home were really equipped um to to have not having they weren't didn't have an office in their home you know they might be living in an apartment right and they have to they're in their kitchen or something like that it was hard for them they didn't feel like they're at work and there's background noise and especially if you're if you're on the phone talking with with customers uh, became very hard for them so i saw that the two uh the two um um uh, types of of um environments one was one benefited from it and one was actually um was uh, impacted by it so but I think, um, yeah, we we became we didn't become more connected or less connected, um, but um, our performance and our productivity definitely were enhanced by it. All right. Hey, thanks very much, John.